Three examples of cognitive decline. Alexander Ocasio-Cortez recently tweeted something about billionaires saying that, you know, oh my God, people are taking it so literally. I don't mean that the people who are billionaires should not exist. I just mean billionaires should not exist. Like, oh my God. Okay, so basically the problem <laughs> with that um, thought process is that it doesn't make any sense. For one, it's a little bit nonsensical. And number two, uh, yes, we do want the people who are billionaires to not exist. We do not want the systems in place that create the billionaires to exist. So these are not cogent cognitive um, thoughts that are happening around her tweet. Um, people are either taking it literally or they're just not thinking it through. So there are exploitive practices that are allowed in businesses which make billionaires happen. Um, so we need to put in the practices such as worker-owned means of production and forcing the... Uh, the eight people that control the entire world's economy, forcing them to do things like invest in infrastructure and, uh, you know, paying their workers a livable wage. The very people that have made them rich deserve to live healthy, comfortable, fairly easy lives. Um, and that's just a fact. That's just the way it goes. But unfortunately, there are practices in place which lift up the exploitation and the extortion of human beings and the financialization of nature and the financialization of human beings. And also, even on a local level, we have practices here where local businesses uh, don't give back to the community. They just move in, corrupt the community to whatever their purposes are, and as long as they are rich and can walk away and live in their lavish, uh, expensive homes, then that's fine, while the community is left kind of living in this garbage heap that they've left behind. Um, so these are, ex you know, exploitive, predatory practices. These are, um, practices that are lifted up by people who are high-functioning psychopaths. You know, the, the statistic rated, like, you know, 10 years ago that every 20 people you meet is like a high-functioning sociopath or a high-functioning psych uh, psychopath. So, you know, that's, that's pretty, pretty scary. Um, and that's because there are so many practices in place which give rise to that type of behavior. It's okay to be predatory. It's okay to exploit everything around you for profit. I mean, look at that billionaire over there. Don't you want to be like him? You know, so, you know, this, so Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's tweet is a decline in, in, uh, in cognitive uh, discourse, and that's an that's an example. That's one example of a decline, you know, of cognitive decline. And so we have to look at what she's really saying and pick it apart. But in this age of rapid fire dialogue, um, you don't really see people picking language apart like that and really really looking at it. There are a few people out there that do it, but they're certainly not on NPR. Um, the people that I read. And the podcasters that I listen to make NPR look illiterate. So um, that's the first example of cognitive decline is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's tweet. The second example of cognitive decline is a little more nuanced, but the way that my mind works, I don't consider it nuanced. I consider it pretty obvious. Um, but this is just based on the fact that I've done research and I've looked into the way the social programming out there is manipulating the minds of everybody on social media. Uh, but I'll give an example of cognitive decline. Uh, there is a TED Talk out there that talks about how we need to make kindness relevant again. Um, and this is from somebody who is a very relatable person to many mm, San Francisco or New York 
the New York set. We're talking a button-down white guy with a pleasant-looking face and a pleasant-looking delivery. Somewhat polished, but not too polished. Um, he's a perfect representation of, of the liberal uh, demographic. Uh, hand in a meritocracy has privilege and um and is and speaks in terms of kindness and things like that so the cognitive decline that's surrounding this sort of talk that I'm that I'm going to 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 talk about is how he's basically saying, you know, look, I had this really difficult job for a while where I was on social media um, targeting trolls. I was trying to take down the trolls um, because they were really affecting the way people interacted on the Internet, and it's become very uh, dysfunctional and dangerous, and, you know, all these terrible things happen as a result of these evil, evil trolls. <sighs> Okay, so his job was to do that. So that means that he is bought and paid for by the very establishment that is controlling the narrative. Um, and what is your definition of a troll? I mean, I deal with trolls in the real world when I've got, you know, lecherous men who are trying to touch me any chance they get. Uh, I also deal with trolls in the real world when people who have slight learning disabilities don't understand a well-spoken Californian like myself and my husband and consider that a threat to their very existence. And so they attack us and run smear campaigns on us in real life, not online. They actually go to people and talk shit about us. So is, is that considered a troll according to this? you know, spokesperson for the, the community, for the liberal mindset. Um, so there's some serious cognitive decline there, but of course he's focusing on inter internet trolls. And so these are the trolls that, um, when I think of an internet troll, I think of somebody who has, you know, it's either a bot or a, um, a person who is paid to disrupt narratives. Um, so bots usually intervene in, in online discourse and they bring in gibberish and they bring in keywords to allow the algorithms to shut you down, uh, to shut down this, this discourse. So they're just a bot. They're just an algorithm. They're not even, you know, there, there's no human behind this troll. Then there are the trolls that are paid by the establishment, and they are human beings, and they target certain audiences online that may uh, challenge, you know, mainstream narrative, mainstream discourse. Those are real trolls, um, and they are paid for by the establishment. And so, and then you have real trolls also that are not paid for by the establishment. Um, maybe they are coming with some really toxic language like, you know, racist language or homophobic language or language that takes away from the actual problems in society and transfers it into, um, you know, into issues that, that are there and present, but they're not as important as, say, like the economy. They're not as important as, say, you know, the fact that the United States is a destructive force around the world. You know, those are real issues. Those are real problems. Um, you know, so, so you have different factions of trolls. So what this very glib and very intelligent speaking TED Talk person does is he sort of waters down this idea that if we use condescension and kindness towards all these people, then we can, you know, take down the trolls. And, you know, it's, it's so much more um, diverse and complicated than that. And so this is an example of cognitive decline in the liberal mindset, where they look at someone that they can relate to successful, well-spoken. After all, he's on the TED Talk platform. He must be worth listening to. You know, 
coming to an audience that can relate to him. And so the audience walks away not really having learned anything, but with all sorts of judgments against people who may disagree with them. And so, and that's basically a cognitive decline because judgments against people who disagree with you are not, that's not a higher way of thinking. Um, you know, cond- being condescending and trying to shut someone down who's presenting you with factual evidence that flies in direct conflict with a mainstream dialogue is, is not healthy. You need to be able to open up your, your, um, your brain (laughs) and open up your, an opportunity to learn. Um, so this idea that, you know, this, this person was, first of all, you have to question his background. I mean, he admits that he was hired to take down online trolls. Um, so that right there is a questionable background, in my opinion, because most of the people that work in social media and are lifted up and paid well by the entire social media apparatus have, um, you know, scripts and language that they have to follow that comes directly from the establishment or the CIA. Um, You know, there are Pentagon people running, you know, social media. There are, you know, that are involved in social media and influencing social media. There are, um, it recently was discovered that somebody at Twitter was, um, a high propagandist. So, I mean, you know, you have to question these kind of things. And so not questioning it and just accepting what this person says, because he's relatable to you on an aesthetic level, you know, white, buttoned down, well-spoken, not at all intimidating, somebody that you would want to go have lunch with at the cafe. You know what I'm saying? Um, so these are people that are put out there to sort of water down the, the concept of what trolling really is. You know, I personally believe that just like with propaganda, there's good propaganda, there's bad propaganda. There's good trolling, there's bad trolling, you know. Right now there is a discourse happening uh, with this person who I actually respect a lot. His name is George Monbiot. He's out of the UK, uh, specifically um, London, I believe. Um, And he is saying that people who are providing um, fact-based evidence on certain movements in the globe, he's saying that those people are trolls. So you have to decide, like, is this person really a troll, or are they simply coming forward with information that puts me in that uncomfortable position where I actually have to look at the world around me and all of its color and all of its background and everything that that it represents. Because a white guy standing on stage, you know, in a TED Talk controlled, antiseptic environment with high production value is something that I like and it makes me feel good. But a person of color that's coming from another part of the world that's proving him wrong, that doesn't make me feel good. And so you have to decide, you know, what's a troll and what isn't. So that's sort of a... a, that's And so what's happening is no one is having these types of thoughts around trolling or around propaganda. They are only going into superficial places, and they're not going deeper. And so that's a sign of cognitive decline. So that was my second example of cognitive decline. And my third example of cognitive decline is the lack of understanding, the lack of of understanding of what's really being presented to society. And the best way that I can describe this is through one of the best lines and one of the best shows that's ever been produced. The show is called Shameless. And the line is coming from a character 
who goes by Lip Gallagher. Lip being short for Philip. Uh, it's on Netflix. You can watch like the first nine seasons of it and and watch as the Gallaghers grow and progress throughout the south side of Chicago. Lip is a genius, and he has enrolled in a biotech um, field in the University of Chicago. So he's enrolled in an advanced program in the University of Chicago, and his professor is saying things to him that, on the surface, seem incredibly cogent, and they seem incredibly um, uh, realistic and acceptable. But Lip challenges him, and what the professor says to him is, you can have access to the meritocracy because you are smarter than most of the people on the planet. You have an opportunity to work very hard at this program and become very, very successful because you've been handed this really great uh, academic scholarship. So you can take that scholarship and do great things. And that's the truth. (laughs) And Lip responds and says, first of all, I don't have to work hard at anything because I'm brilliant. I wake up in the morning and get straight A's when I'm half drunk and half asleep in class. I have dressed you down in class. You are teaching outdated um, modes. You are teaching, you know, modes that are no longer even used in in this particular uh, medium. Uh, so you're, you're giving false information to the students, and I've dressed you down publicly for that. I don't need to work hard. I've got all the answers. That's why I'm a genius. So this idea that you're trying to feed me is kind of like you're trying to feed me a shit sandwich and telling me that I'm getting a lobster dinner because I was born into poverty I was born on the south side of of Chicago. I'm the product of two addicts. I had to raise myself, and my older sister had to raise me. I wasn't born into that meritocracy that you speak of, and I will never have access to that money and that fame that you speak of because I wasn't born into it. So that's a lie. So stop feeding me a shit sandwich and telling me it's a lobster dinner. So... You know, that's a really good example of reality. And unfortunately, there's no discussion about this reality happening in discourse, in American discourse, or in online discourse. The reality is that you ha- you are born into something, and that is how you attain your privilege, and that is how you attain your success not because of hard work and applying yourself. Um, A local business owner in the neighborhood in Pittsburgh where I live was pushing back against me because I said that there is a slumlord who uses up the resources of the neighborhood and dumps his garbage all over the place, whether it's, you know, renting out parking lots to to junkyards that pile up junky cars that are being fixed, or whether it's he's running a, a market, a corner market, where I literally feel like I need a tetanus shot when I leave the place. And her response to me when I said that was, well, what does it matter? A corner market, you just walk in, get what you need, and walk out. And she was very flippant about it. And that comes from a very privileged place. You know, chances are her parents gave her seed money for her shop. You know, chances are she's never struggled financially. She, chances are she's never had to uh, live in Section 8 housing or be on food stamps. And I'm looking at her and I'm thinking to myself, you know, the people that walk into that store are paying a lot of money to buy garbage. When just down the street from where I lived in San Francisco, I paid the same amount of money and got wholesome food and product that was either locally made, locally prepared, 
or it was all organic and shipped in. You know, there was no, no garbage food at all in this local market. And that local market gave back to the community and the community thrived. But whereas the slumlord in this neighborhood is told that he's bringing so much value to the community when you look around and it's, you know, a really filthy, disgusting, um, you know, corner market with, with nothing of value to the people, you know, pawn shops, uh, parking lots full, full of junky cars. That's unheard of, you know, to, to tell these people, look how great I am for you. And then to turn around and pick a, take a big dump on it, basically. So he's telling the people in the local community, I'm feeding you lobster dinner. And all they're really seeing and eating is a shit sandwich. And so cognitive decline comes into this when you're told over and over again how lucky you are and how great you have it and how privileged you are. When in reality, you're sitting there chowing down on a shit sandwich 